Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be creating the ultimate budget home cinema system and we're going to be showing you everything you need in today's video. I'm going to be giving you some options so you can make it customizable to your needs and I'm going to be giving you some suggestions on where you can improve and where I've made some mistakes. Let's jump right into this. So this video is heavily inspired by the recent video from Linus Tech Tips where he shows us his budget home cinema system in his garage that he recently set up. And sponsored by LG, I am going to be converting one of the bays of my two car garage into a home theater setup. And because I'm a cheapskate, we're going to be doing it as cheaply as possible. This video was of course sponsored by LG, so he did get an 89 inch OLED TV from LG, which is ridiculously expensive for most people. Let's bring in the TV. So this, oh my goodness, it's 120 pounds, is LG's newest 2019 NanoCell. And this is the biggest TV that I will have ever had in my house. The rest of the setup, okay, it was pretty budget. The carpet and everything was pretty funny. But today I'm gonna to be showing you a true budget home cinema system. We're gonna be using a projector. I'm gonna be including a screen. I'm gonna be showing you everything you need for the video. Let's jump right into this. So the centerpiece for any home cinema system is gonna be either your screen or your projector. In this case, we're gonna be using a projector and we're gonna be using the AUN M18. Now this is a projector I bought from AliExpress. It costs somewhere between 150 to 200 euro, depending on when you buy it. I've seen some flash sales to get it really, really cheap. I got mine from Spain, I had it here in a few days, but it's a full HD projector and I would recommend most people to get a full HD projector, especially if you're going to a big size, it's well worth the expansion of the budget just to get a 1080p from gaming to text, anything else is much better to read and it's much sharper. So I would recommend it and especially for this price, it's pretty good for what you get. So the projector itself is overall quite nice. We've got a lot of ports and a lot of options on this projector. It does have a couple of HDMI ports, there's an SD card slot. We have a USB slot built in, which is also really nice in this case. So I am going to be leaving links in the description down below to the projector and all of the other products I'm going to be showing you in today's video. So you can check all of those in the link down below to get everything. So there are some things I want to mention about this projector. One is it is full HD, although it does have to go quite far in distance to get some good height. I believe you have to go three meters away from a wall or screen to get 100 inches in size. So keep this in mind, you do want to go pretty far away. And to use the controller, the IR blaster is on the front of the projector. So keep this in mind with placement and where you want to put it. It is going to have to be in some position around there. Now for the projector itself, the sharpness overall was fine for me. I did have some blotches and spots that I got directly from the factory. Although for the price, I can't complain too much about the quality of the lens. For the most part, it's pretty good and you won't really notice them unless you're specifically looking for these things. So when you're actually gaming or doing whatever on this, you really get lost into it. So I have no complaints for the most part for this. I do have some things I do want to complain about the projector though. One thing is it's quite loud. It's not the loudest projector I've ever had but it's not the quietest either. So the fan is quite loud on the side of this projector. It can get pretty beefy, but once you connect it up to some external speakers, it's not so annoying, but depending on the placement of the projector, if it's really close to your face or really close to anything that you're sitting down next to, it will be an extra bit of noise to keep in mind. There is also a keystone that you can do in 15 degrees either way, I believe in 30 degrees in total. So there is some nice extra flexibility with this. And overall, the projector quality is pretty good. The build quality is quite nice. It's got this nice two-tone finish on top of the projector. And the 1080p is quite good on the projector. The colors overall are quite nice. I would say they're a little bit saturated, but for what you're using it for, in the most part, they're okay. And I can't complain too much, especially again, it's only 180 euro, give or take. So for the price, it's quite good for this projector. There is a couple little things that could improve, but can't complain too much considering the price. So you can see in my case, I have actually connected up to a stand over here. So the stand I'm using for this is actually not really meant to be a projector stand. It's just something I had lying around that I wanted to experiment with. You can get these stands really, really cheap. They're like 20 euro for two. And all I did was remove the foot screw on it and it managed to fit into the same hole. It was the same size. So it's not really meant to be there. So I cheated a little bit with this. So I kind of had it for free at home but there is some nice projector stands you can get. You can even get some tripod attachments so you can actually have it as a full table base for the projector, which is another nice option. So depending on how you want to do this, maybe you actually want to wall mount it or anything like that. There is some mounting holes on the bottom. So if you get the correct mounting solution, you will be able to do it like that. So that's enough talk about the projector. Let's move on to the screen. So in this case, I managed to get a 200 by 200 centimeter screen. So it's a full square screen that I got on ball, I think for around 60, 70 euro. Although you can get smaller and bigger screens depending on your needs, but I wanted to get a big enough screen that would cover my
my options so if I wanted to move it in the future. The screen I have a little bit of hit and miss on it because of the big tripod base it's quite annoying you can't adjust the angle so for example if you want to push it right in against the wall say with the two feet flush against the wall you actually can't do this with this projector which is a little bit annoying but it's a little bit frustrating that you can't adjust this with a circular band or something to change the angle of how the projector is although I kind of understand based on the screen but it's still a little bit frustrating nonetheless. Setting up the stand is really really easy and it also folds away quite nicely in this case you can see um, we have a lot of options with the height adjustment for the stand and we can really adjust it to fit our needs. What's nice about this stand and screen combo is you can actually completely remove the screen from the stand. So down the line you could fully wall mount this or mount it on a roof and then get some more options so you don't actually have to use the built-in stand. So one thing I'm not going to be talking about directly in this video or giving too many suggestions is audio, but I want you to really, really consider, depending on your budget, what you can afford for this. So in my case, I just happen to have some speakers lying around so I can use those. And I have a bunch of headphone options depending on your setup. But depending on your needs, there's a bunch of different speakers and I'll be leaving some links in the description that you can check some out. But for me, what I was using is the Trust Titan primarily because I had those lying around. I already had those at home. I use them quite a bit. So they're quite easy to set up. They've got a sub, they're a 2.1 system. I recommend the speakers. They're quite cheap, around 70, 80 euro. And they also have a Bluetooth model for 100 euro. So it's quite a good option also. But this depends again on your needs and what you're gonna be using it for. I would recommend these speakers, but it depends on your budget, how big your space is. So this is a little bit hit and miss depending on where you're putting it. But these are good speakers I'd recommend nonetheless. Anyway guys, that's been my video on the ultimate budget home cinema system. We have everything we need here, the projector, the screen, the stand, kind of. I quickly touched on the audio department just to recommend that you actually get some external speakers because the speakers on the projector, while they're okay, they're not really great for long-term listening. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Linus, of course, no disrespect. I've got your water bottle back here, lttstore.com. And uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. If you did, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Again, links to everything is going to be in the description down below if you want to check anything out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always. Keep it saucy. Peace.